This video is brought to you by the Teaching Center, UF's Learning Support Center, and the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology. Hey guys, this is number 20 for um, Dr. Long's Exam 2 Review Study Guide. Number 20 asks us to outline the differences between uh, ion channels and transporters in terms of their uh, solute uh, properties or solute concentrations. The major differences between transporters and ion channels from a physical uh, standpoint is the shape of the proteins and how they function. In transporters, generally you'll have a, a substrate bind to uh, what is sort of like an active site or a, a portion of the protein that is complementary in the shape and the protein then, either with the induction of ATP or by, it, by itself, will uh, contort or change its shape in order to eject it on the other side of the plasma membrane. And as you can imagine, cells can use transporters to either import or export substances. Ion channels, on the other hand, uh, deal strictly with ions like potassium, calcium, sodium, and you often find these in neurons or in, uh, in regions of cells that require sensitive balance in electrolytes. Uh, and you generally, you can, ha you can have a variety of shapes for ion channels. You can have voltage-gated channels or free channels. And in this case, I've drawn a free channel in which a potassium just goes through a hollow point in the uh, channel itself. Um, but the major pro uh, properties that set these two apart tends to be uh, Vmax. In the case of transporters, it follows perfectly with Michaelis-Menten properties. So, as you guys might remember from your enzyme kinetics, as you increase the substrate concentration, you will uh, it will at first steadily increase uh, the speed at which it processes or it transports substrate, but eventually it comes to a point where adding additional substrate does not help. Uh, this uh, it does not help or it does not contribute to any additional speed, and this is what we would kind of consider saturation. And that's one of the major things that happens with transporters that ion channels, which I'll explain briefly, do not have a trouble with. And that is basically that they get saturated. And this stems from a variety of different things, and cells can take advantage of these things. The, uh, one example is the glucose transporter. In the glucose transporter, you wouldn't necessarily want to have a high Vmax because you would want a high level of control. At the same time, transporters that don't have a high Vmax, uh, you find that they're heavily regulated. In the case of glucose transporters, you may remember that, uh, that in times when uh, insulin levels are high, it you tend to have a higher response of expression for glucose transporter proteins and therefore cells build more transporters and export them onto the plasma membrane surface just so they can take in more glucose from the blood plasma. And the reason the cell has to do this is because it gets saturated easily. And so don't forget, and the reason because it gets saturated is because it follows Michaelis Menten kinetics. Ion channels, on the other hand, don't necessarily have that issue. And, for example, the potassium channels, uh, they, they can transport uh, potassium ions from 10 to the 8th ions per second. That's really fast compared to transporters. And you generally would want, you generally should see ion channels in, in places or in cells that require a fine balance of, uh, of salt concentrations or ion 
concentrations. An example of this is neurons. Um, neurons need to be able to uh, initiate action potentials and communicate information quickly. And you wouldn't want to be limited by a Vmax. And so as a result of that, ion channels fit the bill. They allow ions to go through freely without having to uh, worry about a plateau and how many ions can go through at once. So, uh, it, and on top of that, ion channels do have self-check mechanisms in which you can have a voltage-gated channel. And in voltage-gated channels, the, the check in mind is, is controlling the amount of voltage that is across the plasma membrane. And so that way, you can still have a check and, or have some level of control on how many ions pass through without having to approach Vmax still. So as you can imagine, ion channels are never get saturated. So quickly erasing this, they do not get saturated. Not saturated. Of course, like any physical channel, it could get saturated. But the level of concentrations that cells normally have to deal with, it's not typical for ion channels to reach saturation points. So for all intents and purposes, in the context of cells and what uh, functions they have for ion channels, they never really get saturated. And because they don't get saturated, they don't, fall, they don't necessarily have a Vmax. So as in the levels of concentration that cells work with, they don't follow Michaelis Menten kinetics, at least not in the same way as uh, transporters do. So again, guys, remember, the differences between transporters and ion channels is simply that ion channels do not necessarily get saturated, and it stems from the fact that they do not have uh, a strict Vmax, and that cells take advantage of this for situations where they need to transmit information, or get ions across quickly and efficiently. In case of transporters, you want to be able to take advantage of uh, having a slower Vmax to have a smaller, more prolonged response. As in the case of glucose, you don't necessarily would want to take glucose all out of the blood plasma right away. You would want to be able to have, have it go slow and have it become methodically regulated which as a result of that, they follow Michaelis Menten kinetics and because they get saturated. So those are the differences between transporters and ion channels. Hope that helps, guys.